You know, it doesn't surprise me that some of you derelict niggas and you black feminists would say some dumb shit. And I'm gonna keep it real. Would say some dumb shit about, you know, being against black empowerment, right? Having black owned businesses in our neighborhoods, but rather point the finger at the black man not protecting, you know, not protecting their neighborhoods when you derelict thug desbian ass women and men, all right? Both of you guys are to blame with the 72% of children being born out of wedlock in African-American communities. And that's from the last video that I did, you know? And listen, I don't get emotion at all. I'll, I'll deal with logic, facts, and, 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 and common sense, basically. Logic, facts, and common sense. I read some of the comments. I'm like, okay, so I got a lot of these so-called black feminists and these dumbass derelict niggas and trolls on my page, you know, against black owned businesses and, you know, black economic empowerment. But then you want to point the finger at the black man. And I saw some other comment about, um, we should accept the Asian community coming into our neighborhoods because they're cheap. Nigga, shut your dumb ass up, man. That's some dumb ass shit. Some derelict ass niggas, man. Real talk. And, you know, y'all rarely see me, you know, use this kind of language, but I have to get my point across. So, excuse me if you, you know, you're offended by this language. Turn off the video right now because I'm going to go all in and address this topic. You know, convenience versus black empowerment. Black people, y'all better choose. Would you rather be convenienced by systemic oppression, AKA white supremacy and living under the status quo of this Donald Trump apartheid neo-Nazi regime and black people collectively as a group being, you know, permanent underclassmen, according to Dr. Claude Anderson, we can't even get out of our, our own way, you know, because black people don't understand black economic empowerment. That's the simple problem right there. Y'all want to just point the finger at the black man. When both the black man and the black woman contribute to out of wedlock birth rates in our communities. Over 70% of children being born out of wedlock. I've been married for 12 years with three beautiful children. And I know I, I can bet you that you know these these trolls and these derelict ass feminists on my page are single mothers with multiple baby fathers all right I'm trying to point the finger at the black man when you laid in bed with a man who doesn't want to contribute to his own seed that he implanted in you i have to get on my tommy sotomayor shit really you derelict women on my page Talking about the black man and all this stuff. You know, pointing the finger at the black man and not protecting the neighborhoods and all that stuff. You better look in the mirror. Because you allowed these men to impregnate you and leave you and not take care of their own children. And that's real talk. And statistics don't lie, of course, because ever since the 60s, the black family structure has been on life support. And systemic oppression, aka white supremacy, people like Margaret Sanger, understand that if you destroy the black man you destroy the black family and a strong black man is few and far in between a strong black father is few and far in between it's a rarity to see a strong black uh, father figure in today, today's society so when i see somebody like a lavar ball i give him much props and, and a guy like him gives me much inspiration to continue to be a great father that I am to my children being married for 12 years <laughs> you know what I'm saying so uh before I get further into that family I'm gonna calm down a little bit but uh <laughs> I'm gonna address this convenience versus black empowerment all right and uh kind of you know address this topic because the comments that I saw in my last video were just you know, not surprising, but at the same time, just really, really abhorrent. 
They were just abhorrent. Seriously. So uh, before I get into that, let me introduce myself. If you're watching me for the first time, family, once again, my name is Chauncey, a.k.a. The Black Separatist on this channel. I talk about counter racism. I also talk about issues that affect black people collectively as a group. And I'll offer my suggestions on how to replace this broken system of injustice, this broken system of racism, which is white supremacy, with a system of justice. So if you are new and you agree to that ideology, please subscribe to this channel. If you don't agree, subscribe anyway, because I need two things to happen. My subscribers and my view counts to go up so my message can be widespread about replacing this broken system of injustice with a system of justice. So if you want to hate, watch and troll, be my guest, because at the end of the day, those types of people are just view counts and statistics. So let me get right into it. So I, like I said, that the topic I wanted to talk about, especially from my last video that I did about the uh, the Asian store owner being confronted by the uh, NOI, Nation of Islam, about beating up that black chick, you know, um, in her beauty supply store or in their beauty supply store. And um, I mentioned, you know, I don't feel sorry for the black chick. I still don't feel sorry for the black chick. She should have shopped at a black owned business. Now, the convenience of shopping at a non-black owned business is because it's not too far away. It's in close proximity to where you live. A black owned beauty supply store is few and far in between. But there, there is one. Now, here's the thing I also always talk about family. For those of you who, you know, follow me for any significant amount of time, you guys know I talk about parallel economies, black parallel economies to the dominant white society. So stores like, you know, the Asian beauty supply store or non-black beauty, beauty supply store, you will find a black owned equivalent somewhere. Just Google it. You'll find it. OK, you'll find because there, there are some black owned. I already addressed it in my last video. There are black business directories where you'll find a black owned beauty supply store in your area. If not, if you don't want to find a brick and mortar type store, find one online and shop. Right. But at the same time, like I said, black people would rather be convenience and live under the status quo of systemic oppression and, you know, shop at non black owned businesses rather than spend their money with a black owned business, even though it could be maybe an hour, two hours away if they want to shop at a brick and mortar store. Right. But at the same time. Right. At the same time, when you want to support a black owned business, whether it be online or brick and mortar, you have to do one research, right? Research it, find out if indeed it's reputable, meaning it has good customer service, positive feedback from its customers, etc. You just don't want to just support a black owned business just to support it. You want to do your due diligence and do some research on it to see if it got some good reviews. And that goes that goes along with the, you know, the black business owners. Be professional, right? And all your customers be professional and understand that customer service is key to any business uh, dealing with service, right? Service and goods, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the thing about it, family. When going back to parallel economies, you know, somebody was somebody in the comment section. I'll read it right now. I'm on the page right now. Somebody said, uh, the video maker doesn't see the irony of making a, such a video with a Japanese made music and audio equipment in his background. It's not Japanese made dumbass. It's actually American made, but that's irrelevant because the reason why it's irrelevant, because there is no black owned equivalent of this particular keyboard that's. 11 years old, which I haven't used in like four years. There is no black owned equivalent, right? But in order to have a black owned equivalent, you need to invest, right? You need to put in that work and that takes time. So this goes along with people talking about let's boycott this, let's boycott that. You can't really boycott anything unless you have a equivalent, a black owned equivalent to that business you want to boycott. So when people talk about let's boycott Walmart, let's boycott, uh, you know, let's boycott Google, 
right? There is no black owned equivalent Walmart. There is no black owned equivalent Google right now, but you can do research on smaller businesses that are like a Walmart that may have, you know, some products that Walmart sells. So instead of going into Walmart to buy that certain product, go to that black owned business and buy that product, then buy the rest of your products at Walmart. Continue to support that black owned business that's within your proximity to where you live, right? And the more people that shop there, the more, you know, money that they get. And over time, they can expand their brand, expand their business and franchise out to other areas. That's what you call putting in that work. That's what you call black economic empowerment, right? Same thing with Google. There, There is no, there'll, it's going to be a long time before we have a black owned equivalent Google that owns and operates YouTube, but we can, we can empower and invest in companies like blackspot.com. And I know people talk about, Oh, well, black spot keeps crashing this and that black spot is, is real shaky and I can't use it. I can't use the interface. Well, guess what? Invest in it so that it can get better, right? Put your money in there, invest in it so it could get better. Sign up for it, be a member, a paid member is a monthly subscription or it's a, it's a, um, subscription based, uh, social media platform. So you can, there's different options that you can choose to join the site, continue to support it economically so that it can grow and get better. Right? So that's the thing that takes time family, you know, <clears throat> another, another, um, thing I want to mention also is inconvenience right black economic empowerment or black empowerment in general is really inconvenience it's inconvenient because it takes time it takes dedication it takes due diligence to see it through so for instance last year when i did the black uh the black bank challenge i signed up with a checking account with um one united bank and uh one united bank is the only black bank in the state of florida one United Bank is the only uh, branch in the state of Florida last time I checked. And guess what? When I had to withdraw money out of an ATM, I have to go all the way down near damn Liberty City, which is 35 minutes away from where I live, to withdraw money. And it's in a bad neighborhood. That's inconvenience. Right. And there is, uh, you know, ATMs that are nearby or affiliated ATMs that are nearby that don't have the surcharge fee. But I'd rather go to the actual bank where I bank from to withdraw money. But luckily, you know, I don't carry a lot of cash. So I do everything with plastic with debits and credit cards. Uh, but at the end of the day, family, when I signed up for that bank, I said I, I knew that eventually I have to come down here to do a transaction, ATM transaction or just deal with the bank. Uh, 35 minutes away, I have to inconvenience myself, right? Just to get some money out, but that's all worth it to me because guess what? I'm supporting a black owned bank and I'm helping that bank build its economic gap towards the black community, right? I'm just playing my part. So that's my point family. Y'all better choose convenience over black empowerment. Which one is it? All right. Which one is it? I, I, I know, you know, you trolls and you derelict niggas and you, you black feminists, you so-called black feminists out there, you know, you want to point the finger at the black man and all this and that. And, 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 and we got to look at ourselves. We, we, we are, you know, the whole, you know, the quote, we're our worst enemy. Black people were immigrants, <laughs> you know, sounded like Dr. Big Carson and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, it is what it is, family. Uh, like I said, y'all better choose. You guys better choose because all you got, all you derelict black feminists out there talking about you're a coward for saying you don't feel sorry for the for the black chick get beat up by the Asian lady. Look at your goddamn selves for contributing to the African Americans who have children out of wedlock. That's what I meant to say. All right. It's early in the morning, family. I'm getting tongue tied. The African Americans who have children out of wedlock, you contribute to that. 
you better look at the mirror because you contribute to that. And it's not getting better because all y'all got babies and y'all not married. All y'all got multiple baby daddies that are who are that who ain't there in their lives. All right. Look at the goddamn mirror. And that's real talk. All right. Look at the mirror. So those are my thoughts, family. Y'all better choose, man. Y'all better choose and uh, wake up. Wake the hell up. You know, I know it's hard for you guys who are in, under a mental illness to see that you're under a mental illness. Right. Cognitive, dif cognitive dissonance, post-traumatic slavery syndrome, Stockholm syndrome. I know it's hard for you to realize you have that. But again. You got to look in the goddamn mirror, especially to you derelict ass black feminists out there. All right. Look in the mirror and find out what you did wrong. Lay, laying up with that man who is not contributing to his child that he put a seed in you and he's not helping you out. And you're still a single mother struggling. Find out why. All right, family. So anyway, I wanted to address that because, you know, that last video was uh, the comments is crazy. But at the same time, I'm not surprised. I, I, I'm not surprised at all. All right, family, uh, a little bit under the weather this morning, man. I'm kind of I don't know what's going on. My sinus is kicking in. It's been uh, the weather has been really cold here, too. So the weather's like 50 some degrees. And uh, my family here, we've been sleeping with the windows open for the first time in like a long time. So. Uh, I'm liking the weather, but you know, it's making me sick. As you can tell, I'm like real congested right now. I'm gonna take, excuse me. I'm gonna take some, uh, I'm gonna take some medicine, get better. But the day looks, the day today, which is Saturday morning, looks like it's going to be a real good day. I'm gonna just uh, take my time and enjoy my family. All right. <laughs> my black family. That's what I'm gonna do. All right. So anyway, Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. All right, family. Until next time, this is Chauncey, a.k.a. The Black Separatist, signing out. Peace.